Yes. The way I wanted to start this presentation was um, with a painting by Magritte and a quote from him about the human condition that this is essentially this painting, he says, is this is how we see the world. We see it as being outside ourselves. Um, so what this paper is about is we're trying to connect legal language and legal categories to the physical world as an important step towards instituting um, uh, governance in the Anthropocene. And to do this requires a departure from the legal convention of abstracting and separating people and places into persons and things. An important, an important first step here is to acknowledge the anthropocentrism of law and in particular the way in which this sets up a core um, and an environment um, and the environment as a, as a set of resources. So in Australia, a prominent environmental law scholar, uh, Professor Jan MacDonald, wrote in 2010, institutions that are resistant to change or that change in small increments can operate as barriers to adaptation, especially when transformational shifts are required. Uh, one of the key features of different theories of adaptation is the recognition of what we call adaptive, sorry, adaptive capacity, by which we mean the ability or potential to respond successfully to climate variability. Um, one hopeful thing that McDonald points out is that the opposite um, is true in that um, transformational shifts can be brought about um, by facilitating uh, the implementation of adaptation policies and respond quickly to new knowledge. So this quote is from uh, David Orr. The great ecological issues of our time have to do in one way or another with our failure to see things in their entirety. That failure occurs when minds are taught to think in boxes and are not taught to transcend these boxes or to question overly how much they fit with other boxes. We categorise and subcategorise law to our students. We create matrushka dolls of legal concepts and we divide the study into hierarchies with division of labour. This is a quote from Paul Mahag. I regard this feature of legal education as a barrier of adaptation or a barrier to adaptation because it encourages law students to think in terms of law's taxonomy, limiting the opportunity to develop uh, what Stephen Dovers has called integrative thinking skills. Um, integrative skill, thinking skills draw connections between law and non-law disciplinary knowledge, as well as between law's uh, intra subdisciplines. Jane Holder in the UK has argued that a possible solution is to extend or apply law in action trends. Um, and in this way, we can diminish some of the abstraction of legal education and look at how law interacts and impacts upon um, the physical world. In my previous work, I've argued that the separation of rights from responsibilities obscures the connection um, between our interaction with the physical world. And it is uh, my contention that legal education reproduces this separation. The situation is a consequence of uh, the taxonomy of law, the origins of which precede the existence of our current environmental understanding. The taxonomy of law was created um, at a time when the law was deeply anthropocentric and facilitative of the rise of industrialization and the growth-based economy with its attendant political and economic philosophies of liberalism and capitalism. Although today, the appeal and the logic of the growth economy is certainly under critique. And although the regulatory landscape is far more complex than the public private distinction at the heart of law's taxonomy, nonetheless, the taxonomy has not changed. And in most cases, neither has the law school curriculum. The categories of law do remain deeply anthropocentric and to that extent in the face of scientific evidence indicating the need to situate ourselves within rather than outside our world. It can be argued that law's taxonomy is itself a structural barrier to adaptation. Uh, and to quote um, UK sustainability educator Martin Haig, many believe that our present educational structures are less appropriately geared to meeting the needs of the future than to reinforcing the destructive characteristics of our own age. Um, so it's very uh, commonly noted that one of the keys to moving beyond uh, this crisis, uh, which we now sort of capture with the concept of the Anthropocene, is to um, address the problems created by the fragmentation of knowledge and information systems. Uh, universities are at the heart of this fragmentation in our reproduction of knowledge through a system of disciplines. 
which facilitates the specialisation of expertise into disciplinary and subdisciplinary fields of research and teaching. And as we know, the systems of the earth are integrated. Um, and while many forms of modern knowledge do tend towards specialisation, the scope of the environment seems to compel interdisciplinary comprehensive focus. And indeed, there's a lot of literature on the desirability of interdisciplinarity. However, as Noel Castry, a geographer, has pointed out, one simply cannot study everything. There is, to some extent, the unavoidability of specialisation and there are contingencies of collaboration and the fact that knowledge is plural, especially when morals and values are part of the story. So where does that leave us? Firstly, we need to think back to what the concept of the Anthropocene is. Um, without going into the, and I'm sure you've covered this already at the conference, um, the geological provenance of the concept, it is nonetheless a very grand concept in its magnitude. Um, and these days, years later, it, we, you know, we've sort of appropriated it into our own um, ways of thinking. So it's no longer particular to any single discipline. The Anthropocene is always accompanied by some kind of sense of urgency. There's uh, a risk of death of the world as, as it has existed for humans, although certainly not in and of itself. Uh, there are lots of critiques, and I'm sure you've covered this at your conference, of the concept of the Anthropocene. Is the Anthropocene the logical end point of anthropocentric thought itself, um, the God factor and so on? I don't wish to get into the critiques of the concept of the Anthropocene, although I do think it's important to get, engage with them for the purposes of a review of legal education. What I do want to look at are the implications for education of this concept of the Anthropocene. Noel Castry says that the Anthropocene necessarily implies change in the way much of the university research community conducts itself. After all, a new mode of life requires novel modes of knowledge. Now, I've emphasised there the word research in his, uh, in his sentences because, again, the idea of knowledge here is being reproduced as research, uh, whereas, of course, for most of us, the, the vast majority of us anyway, in uh, teaching universities, the work is educational and teaching. And this leads us to that whole literature about sustainability education. Um, in a previous article uh, called This Is Not A Thing, Land Sustainability and Legal Education, I reviewed the sustainability education literature and um, noted that um, although there are different approaches, the emphasis seems to be on not learning about the environment, but learning for the environment in sustainability education with an emphasis on skills and the capacity for integrative thinking rather than um, trying to shove more pieces of knowledge into the mind of a student, um, trying to equip them with the capacity to think across um, different conventions and cultures of uh, thinking and thought and knowledge. Um, prominent themes in sustainability education, uh, I've just selected a few here, include in particular multidisciplinarity or interdisciplinarity or transdisciplinarity. Now, these are not um, synony synonymous terms. They are distinctive. And I don't want to pause here to go into the distinctions between those different kinds of prefix disciplinarity. Um, but I just want to sort of step back uh, from the prominence of this and consider the ways in which the idea of interdisciplinarity or multidisciplinarity uh, reproduces um, very essentialised um, disciplines. So, for example, thinks of science as a very positivist, neutral, apolitical um, thing that's based on empirical methodology, thinks of law as, you know, a system of rules, a normative framework. Um, so the extent to which multidisciplinarity or interdisciplinarity is helpful as a tool for thinking about legal education in the Anthropocene is yeah. contingent on our understanding of the disciplines within uh, this relational uh, yeah. disciplinarity, however we characterise that. Uh, the second point or the second theme in the sustainability literature increasingly, um, this is coming out now in some uh, Anthropocene education theory generally, is place-based learning. A um, couple of ideas here are that um, instead of learning about things, uh, learning in place um, involves uh, learning about paying attention and learning about uh, feeling and experiencing. And immediately, um, because I'm fortunate to call myself Australian, 
um, I think about the very little that I know about Indigenous Australian legal education and uh, I look forward to Professor Anka talking about this further. Um, my, my understanding of the ways in which Indigenous Australians learn the law of country is precisely through this place-based learning methodology. Um, but my question here, and, and I guess the challenge, is how do we go from university campus with classrooms to something that is entirely um, uh, integrated and place-based? Um, and which brings me back to David Orr's idea that all education is environmental education. And it uh, does um, tie into some of the literature now in um, kindergarten to year six uh, education theory and environmental education theory about where one learns and how one learns um, as being largely informative of the way that we do think about our relation with the world and in the world. Legal education, by contrast, conventionally, and I'm sure we're all in this situation, absolutely excludes environmental considerations, uh, even where they are materially relevant. With the exception of environmental law and theoretical subjects, um, the physical environment is largely irrelevant in the uh, core curriculum of the modern law and uh, its education system. So if the cradle of legal thought and practice is the law school, then the question of the contribution of legal education uh, to whatever um, catastrophic or hopeful scenarios the Anthropocene is thought to deliver, then the contribution of legal education is clear. Legal education can contribute meaningfully to the reform of law's taxonomy, the structural obstacles to adaptation, and to developing the capacity of future lawmakers to connect law and to review the interaction of law um, with the world. However, this is an opportunity uh, that we ought not to postpone. And as I ended my article um, of three years ago on sustainability legal education, I also share the, um, the point made in an earlier slide that the uh, appeal of the concept of the Anthropocene is its sense of urgency, notwithstanding a whole bunch of, I'm sure, perfectly valid and very interesting critiques of the concept of the Anthropocene. Thank you.